All ideas contrary to Mao's thinking and the objects that represented them had to be destroyed. Not just Confucianism and Buddhism, but even more so foreign faiths like Christianity. Throughout the country, churches were closed, clergy unfrocked, religious symbols smashed. The statue of the Virgin Mary was replaced by a portrait of Mao. One form of worship gave way to another. Physical destruction wrought by the Red Guards was unparalleled even in China's long history. Monasteries all over the country, as far away as distant Tibet, were ransacked and razed to the ground. The most important sites, like the Forbidden City, were protected on the orders of Zhou Enlai. But elsewhere, Mao's stormtroops had free reign. Zhou Enlai's implicit distinction between smashing bourgeois ideas and smashing bourgeois individuals was quickly forgotten. Over the next few weeks, tens of thousands of people in Beijing were harangued and severely beaten. Many hundreds died. The highest ranking victims were brought out for public humiliation before mass meetings in a football stadium. They wore placards around their necks with their names crossed out like common criminals awaiting execution. Wu Han was a playwright, one of whose works angered Mao. The chairman used it as a pretext to overthrow Wu's patron, the mayor of Beijing, Hong Zhen. The purge he'd set in motion would eventually claim other victims, still higher in the chain of command. Meanwhile, Kong and his colleagues were left to twist in the wind.